Hey kiddos. Okay, here we go. This is the video instructions for how to get started with the Tower of Power project. Now remember, we have a field trip on uh, the 19th and the 20th of November. Uh, period 3 goes up to CU Boulder on the 19th. It's Wednesday the 19th. And periods 2, 4, and 6 go up on the 20th. So those are block days. So we did that intentionally. And on that field trip, you'll bring your tower and you'll actually smash it to find out how good it really was. So with the tower, we're designing them on the computer and then we're going to laser cut them. But once they're laser cut, they're done. So we need to make sure that they are good the first time because uh, there is no second time. And so what you're going to do, you're going to use what's called a stress analysis. Uh, an inventor has that. So we're going to make some parts here in just a second. I'm going to show you how that works. But really, the laser cutting, just to give you an idea, each group is going to get a sheet of plastic that looks like this. Uh, it's going to be 12 inches tall and 24 inches wide and an eighth of an inch thick. Now this one's actually a quarter inch thick because we wanted to be able to laser cut it but still have it intact so we could use it as an example. Now you're going to leave a one inch border around the whole thing that isn't cut and that's just for safety when using the laser cutter. So instead of 24 inches of width you're going to get 22 inches and instead of 12 inches vertically you're going to get 10 inches because you're leaving the one inch border around it. Now you're going to be working in groups of two or three so you're going to want to start talking to your neighbors and pick people that you work well with. If there's somebody that you know that historically you're not very productive with, it's probably not the best person to work with. So you want to start talking about who are you going to be with. Now we're not committing to anybody yet. That'll be the next step. Uh, but you want to start thinking about who is your group going to be and all groups have to be at least two with a maximum of three. Okay. Now you'll also notice the towers have interlocking pieces, interlocking sides on here so that they go together. You can see how it zigzags down here. You want your towers to be strong and so those interlocking sides allow you to increase the surface area uh, for when you're gluing them together. So that's a requirement also. So they'll all be 10 inches tall and you have 22 linear inches to use. Now you and your group, uh, whether you have one partner or two other partners, everybody must contribute equal number of sides to the, fi the final product um, in the end. So if you end up, if you decide to do a six sided tower, then you're each and you're in a group of three, then you're each going to use your side twice. So each person will design their own side. You have to make sure they're compatible with one another and you'll each use them twice. If you decide you're going to use a 10 sided tower and you have a group of two, then each of you are going to use your piece five times. You'll design a piece that's used five times and your partner will design a piece that's used five times. Okay, so now we're going to do some basic design on Inventor. I'm going to show you how to run a stress analysis. So let's say out of our 22 inches uh, that we have of linear distance, uh, we're going to design a tower that is, let's just say it's 10 sides for the sake of math. So 22 divided by 10 gives us 2.2. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to create a tower piece. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to make a rectangle. I'm going to put some of these dimensions on. I'm going to make it 10 inches tall, just like yours is going to end up being. And I'm, I'm going to say four inches wide, even though it may end up being two inches or it may end up being six inches, depending on what kind of how many sides you're going to have. So let's just say that's my tower piece right there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it into three dimensional. And if you remember, I told you the, the plastic that you're going to be using is an eighth inch acrylic plastic. So an eighth of an inch is going to be 0.125. So everybody should have a 10 inch tall by four inch wide piece of uh, material on here that's an eighth of an inch thick. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see can we choose a material that is actually acrylic plastic? Let's see, PVC. Hmm. There's ABS. Well, as of this recording, um, I'm just going to say, oh, there you are. Let's, let's just say, let's use the very top one on the list. Let's just say ABS plastic. And if I find something better, I will put a note in the uh, Schoology. So you might want to check for the notes for this step to see if I changed it. So we're just going to say it's ABS plastic. Now what I want you to do, you're going to do uh, several different test towers because I want each person to have at least three different designs that they tested. And uh, so let's, let's go ahead and say, 
we're going to put some shapes on here. And let's say I, I want to I want to test a rectangle up here, and I want to test an ellipse over here because I might do that. And I'm also going to put another ellipse over here, and maybe we're going to do a polygon. And let's let's make it a 12-sided polygon right down here. Okay, that's that's what I think a really good tower is going to look like, and uh, which I don't really think that because it's probably going to do terrible. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go to that, and let's say extrude, and let's select that and that and that and that, and let's cut those out. So there is my tower. That's my tower piece. Now you notice I haven't put the interlocking sides on there. I'm going to make a video for the interlocking sides. It'll come up next um, or soon after this, but we won't worry about that yet. Right now we're just testing different shapes to see how can you remove material from your tower and still have a really strong tower because there's an equation for this challenge and it's going to have to do with the weight of your tower and how strong your tower is. So you have to remove material because the weight is actually the most important component to it. Um, and so you're going to have to remove material, but how can you remove material in a smart way? So let's go ahead and test this and see, wow, is this a really good tower or what? So we're going to go to environments and let's go over here to stress analysis. All right, now that's everything's grayed out except for create simulation. That's because that's exactly what we want to do. So click create simulation. And now we're going to put together a stress analysis simulation. And all of this is fine, all the defaults on here. So just say OK. OK, and now there's a few things we're going to have to do. We're going to apply a force. So if you click on force, it's going to say location. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make sure I select this entire face. All right, so we are applying a force on the top. Now, this is all going to be relative. So as long as you and your partners put the same force in here, you're going to get comparable data. So I'm just going to say one pound force. Okay, and as long as your partners also say one pound force, then you can look at each other's data and say, oh, look, at this one did better. But if somebody puts one and somebody puts one million, you're going to have very different uh, results. So I'm just going to say apply. So I applied a force to the top of this. So we'll go ahead and close that. And you'll see right here next to loads, it got a little plus, and that's because that is the force that I just applied. Okay, now we're going to go to constraints. I need to do a fixed constraint, and I need to apply that to the bottom of this thing. So I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to say that bottom is fixed. It can't move. So apply. And now you see right here next to constraints, a little plus just showed up, and there it is. That's the fixed constraint that I just put on there. All right, so let's go back to our isometric view. Okay, I want to go to material. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to say, well, if it gives me options, there we go. I'm going to say assign material. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that ABS plastic again. Um, oh, it's already in there, good. The original material. Uh, you can override also if you didn't change it, if that says generic, you can just click in this override and you can say I want it to be ABS plastic, which I already did. So it's taking into account uh, the yield strength of that ABS plastic, so I'll say OK. And now that I've got a material and I've got my constraints and I've got my load all over here, I can go ahead and run a simulation. So I'm going to click this little button that says simulation over here. And what it's doing right now is a whole bunch of math. It's factoring, uh, well, it's not yet, now that I hit this run button, now it is. So now it's doing all kinds of calculations to figure out, well, based on the force that I applied up here and the fact that this bottom part can't move, how is this piece going to respond to that based on the material that we told it? So when we go up to CU Boulder, when you do the stress analysis test on this, we're actually going to smash it with a hydraulic press. So it's hooked up to a computer and it's actually going to apply a force and it's going to measure the amount of force required to make this thing fail. And they will all fail, but they will fail at different uh, different loads. Okay, so now we have what's called a von Mies chart, and you can see right here von Mies stress, um, and it's this nice little rainbow colored uh, chart. It shows us the high stress areas and the low stress areas, and von Mies is selected over here, which is great. If you want to look at other types of charts, you can come over here and activate them, but we don't need to look at those right now. So I can come up here to animate, and I can say go. And now what I get to see is what is this going to look like when I apply the force and I, and I play it. And obviously, it's real quick, this 12-sided shape I put in here, that wasn't a very good idea. 
I put it really close to the side and I can see that that is probably going to break really quick. Where on the opposite side, I've got lots of strong material here and I've got lots of strong material up here and it's certainly not going to break. So it's, it, the left side's a lot heavier than I need it to be and the right side's really weak. So I'm going to have to make modifications to both of those. Uh, you can also look at the ellipses and if you look at this vertical ellipse, it's nice and strong. There's, there's no high stress areas um, forming around it, but this horizontal ellipse is. You can see a high stress area off to the left and right sides are forming. Also, these sharp corners on this rectangle that I put in here, the corners are causing high stress fracture areas, especially up here near the top. So those are all modifications, things I'm gonna to wanna to incorporate into my second generation tower. So this is something I could record as my first, uh, my first tower that I tested. And I'm gonna put it in my Google Doc and I'm gonna list it as first generation tower. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe make a couple comments, just put a couple notes in there and say, here's what I saw, here's what was good about it, here's what wasn't so good about it. And then I'm going to go do another, another generation of this. I'm going to go make some more modifications, okay? And really, I want to say at least three or four generations to your design. And that means your, your partners are each going to have three or four uh, generations to theirs also. And then when you actually come together as a team, you're going to say, well, here's what I learned. Here's what I saw, what was good on mine, what wasn't so good. And, and they're going to share what they saw. And you're going to each go together and you're each going to design your own side that is compatible, interlocking sides compatible with each other, and you're going to make a group tower that is made up of pieces that you each designed. Now, let's say I'm not getting enough color in here. Let's say I, I need more, more color. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this real quick. I'm going to come up here to color bar. I'm going to say I get a lot of blue in here. What I really need to see is more of the reds. I need to find out my, my high stress areas. Then I might, I might change this, my minimum, and I believe, let's see, do I make it bigger or smaller? Let's see what happens when I put a one right here. Okay, did that do anything? No. Let's see if I make it smaller. And then apply. That gave me a little bit more color. If I add a couple, apply. Okay, so maybe I don't want to change the blue one. Maybe it was this one I wanted to change. Where the red, oh, where the red area wasn't quite as high. Maybe I said, I, I want to know, I want to see more red. Oh, okay, that's going to help me. So if I change the maximum on the color bar, now I can see more of those high fresh areas because I know it's going to break down. And if I'm saying, okay, I know it's going to break down here. I know I'm going to change that. Where else is there really high stress areas? Well, there certainly was on this horizontal ellipse. There really wasn't on this vertical ellipse. And there was on these sharp corners of the rectangle that I made. So those are all modifications I'm going to make, okay? So this is just called the color bar. And uh, then if you really want, you could go back and animate it again just to see what it looks like. Okay? All right, that's step one. So by the end of step one of this project, here's what you should have to show to me to get a grade check. You should, on the website for this project, you'll find under the Tower of Power, you'll be able to find the 2014-2015 Tower of Power teams. And you're gonna come onto this page, which hasn't been developed yet. It's, it is there, but there's not a whole lot on it. By the time you see it, there probably will be. But you're gonna go to the story of your tower. And on the story of your tower, you're gonna click, and that's gonna take you to a presentation, a Google presentation. And on that, um, hopefully it does, I'm going to keep talking even though it's not loading. Uh, on that presentation, you and who you think your partners are going to be, you're going to create a slide. And you're going to list all three of your names at the top. And you're going to start documenting the story of your towers, okay? So I want, I want to see some of the pictures, the early pictures of your stress analysis on here. And I want to see all three of your names on the top. And then I want you as a group to create a Google presentation, not a Google Doc, but a Google presentation and I want you to share it with all three of yourselves and then I want you to link it to your slide on here so let's say this is your slide and your names are across the top and you've got some images on here you're also going to link on here here's here's insert link you're going to link onto your slide your google doc so we can go through the slides and we can see everybody's slide on here and if there's a group that we're interested in seeing more about theirs we can click on the link that takes us to your google doc which is where you are putting together the entire story of your group project and that'll be all the development okay so once i see that you've created a slide on here and you have your names across it and you've got some of the basic screenshots of what of your first stress analysis that's going to be the first 10 points and i'm going to record you as an official team at that point now here's what i will ask you and this is a warning so make sure you you are responsible about it 
do not mess with other people's slides. Okay? It's a really hard thing. I know you guys are 14 and 15 years old and it's very tempting to go onto somebody else's uh, document on here and change 